Let's talk iPhone edition. I mean, iPhone X. No, hang on. iPhone 8? Hi guys, I'm Simon. This is Tech My Life Video and it's iPhone time. If you're already a subscriber to the channel, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, guess what? It's your lucky day. You've won a free subscription. That's right. Click the button down below. It's free today. It's free forever. It's always free. What am I talking about? Let's go. So it looks like we're going to have three phones, the iPhone 7S, the iPhone 7S Plus, and this new phone. Now, what's it going to be called? It was originally called the iPhone Edition, which is just an awful name. But now, more widely, it's been called the iPhone 8. So why would they call it 8? Are they trying to keep up with Samsung, who have the S8 and the Note 8? It doesn't make a lot of sense. They'd also be moving to the number increasing every single year. So 9, 10, 11. Soon we'll have the iPhone 20. At some point, that numbering system runs into some kind of problems down the track. Something's gonna to have to change. Of course, technology is gonna evolve, but they're gonna run into issues. And next year, if we have the nine, do we have the 8S and what happens to the, the other sizes? Do we go back to having two iPhones, just the 8S and the nine, and this one screen size kind of fits all? I'm interested to see what happens in that space. The other cool name was the iPhone X. Now that's the one I hope they go with. We've had OS X for the Mac operating system. It's 10 years. X is perfect. It sounds awesome. Uh, but then next year, what do you do? Um, maybe they give them names. Maybe this one's gonna be called Steve, um, like with Mavericks and uh, the Mac operating system. Who knows? Uh, I'd love to hear in the comments down below what you think they're gonna do with the name now and moving forward. So the screen is a big talking point, and it's a big screen. It fills almost the entire front of the device. But is that a good thing? It's OLED, but if you're watching this on an iPhone 8, and if that's what it's called, an S8 or a Note 8, you better get used to these. They're thumbs. They're your thumbs obstructing your content. Now, some content will be cropped, but if we're cropping a lot of content, then we need a screen that big. Now... With my iPhone 7, I'm already trying to get my thumb out of the way to view some content in portrait mode. So are small bezels the way to go? Also, if the screen goes all the way to the edge, from Samsung's bra case, we've seen that kind of providing a protection system for this screen is somewhat problematic. So we're gonna see a lot more of this. That's a broken screen. That's your screen potentially being broken. And it's gonna cost you an absolute packet to replace that OLED screen. So is this a good thing? Yes, we want smaller devices. Yes, we want bigger screens, but within reason. So I'm not 100% sold, but what do you think in the comments down below about the screen going all the way to the edges? So while we're talking about breaking your phone and cases, let's talk wireless charging. It finally looks like Apple are gonna introduce wireless charging on this new phone. Now, they won't include a charger in the box, I'm pretty sure of that, and they'll probably charge you a fair bit for it. But, is it a good thing? Will it charge through a case? Because on this new phone, to have the wireless charging, the back is gonna be glass. So that's glass front and back. Now, the last time I broke an iPhone, and the only time was an iPhone 4S, I smashed the back, which was glass. So, if you can't run a case because of wireless charging, is wireless charging a good thing? Comment down below. So Touch ID is my favorite feature on my iPhone, my iPad Pro, and my MacBook Pro. It's so quick and easy to make purchases uh, and to unlock your device. I, I just think it's a brilliant feature. And I'm a little bit concerned about unlocking my phone with my face. Uh, what if I've got sunnies on? What if I grow a massive beard? Am I going to have to keep retraining it? Is it going to, is it going to understand? Um, if it's on an angle, they're saying it will be able to unlock because I often reach across the table and unlock my phone. Um, and what's going to happen? You know, like, because it can't just be good. It needs to be awesome. It needs to be as good as Touch ID. It can't be worse. It has to be as good or better. It can't be like Samsung's face unlock, which you can do with a photograph. That's just in, uh, you know, it's not safe enough when you're making purchases. What do you think in the comments down below? I'd love to hear your thoughts. So the new phone is coming with iOS 11 and with no home button. 
it's a whole new world. Your workflow or your kind of interaction flow with your phone is going to change potentially dramatically. Now that could have built up, those habits have built up over maybe 10 years of living with iPhone and living with iPad. Now, habits can be hard to break and new ways of doing things can be frustrating, but change is inevitable. And I, for one, am actually quite excited about uh, iOS 11 and what it's gonna bring with the new phone. How is it going to work? So what are your thoughts? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below as to, are you excited about iOS 11 and how are you gonna live without a home button? So one last thing, and it's an issue that really affects me personally, and it may not affect you, but this joint in my thumb doesn't actually move. This joint here bends, but this one here, it doesn't bend. Same here, neither of my thumbs bend at this joint. So reaching my thumb down across my palm is quite difficult. So if we look at the phone, so as you can see, I find it quite difficult to get my thumb down to the bottom corner of the screen. If I hold the phone in my hand, I certainly can't do it. So I have to hold it in the tips of my fingers and the bottom corner of the screen is even more difficult to reach down there. If I wanna reach, then reach the top of the screen, I have to kind of move the phone in my hand to be able to do that. Obviously, with more thumb dexterity, I would be able to do that. As I mentioned with cases, I'm not sure whether the cases are gonna work and therefore I am concerned about dropping, dropping the phone. So I can't be alone in having some sort of issue with an iPhone. Maybe not that exact issue, but how do your hands work? Are they too small to kind of reach around the screen? Do you always have to use two hands to operate your phone? Love to hear in the comments down below. So a couple of other things we may see at this event, an LTE enabled Apple Watch. Now Apple held off on that because of battery life issues. So it'll be interesting to see if that comes in the next generation and obviously announcing it now would be good with the lead in to Christmas. Apple TV, Apple TV 4K. Now 4K content in Australia for a lot of people is quite difficult to stream with our internet speeds. There's also Apple negotiating uh, pricing on what the movies are gonna sell for. If you've already bought a movie and it costs more for the 4K version, will you be able to kind of upgrade to 4K? How's that gonna work? That's gonna be the interesting thing in that space. HomePod, will we find out more about HomePod when it will be released? Also, the iMac Pro, will we get a date of release for that? Hey, comment down below, is there anything in this presentation you're hoping Apple will announce? So the event is on September 12th, 2017, coming from the Steve Jobs Theatre. Uh, on the new Apple campus. Now it's some ungodly hour of the morning here in Australia, but I'm gonna try to be up watching the iPhone 8 or whatever it's gonna be called. It's going to be in limited numbers. I'm really hoping I can get one when it does get released. Thank you for watching. Thanks for your support. If you got this far, give the video a thumbs up and I look forward to reading your comments. I'm Simon, this has been Tech My Life Video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.